Hi, I'm Cassandra Clare. I'm the author of the Mortal Instruments series, The Infernal Devices, and The Dark Artifices, which together make up the Shadowhunter Chronicles. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the third book of the Dark Artifices trilogy, Queen of Air and Darkness. Queen of Air and Darkness is the third book in the Dark Artifices series, which began with Lady Midnight. And the Dark Artifices series is really special to me because it is a series that is set in Los Angeles, which is where I grew up. It's been wonderful to write all these scenes that take place in places I spent time in when I was the age of the kids in the book. So one of the first things I did when I started researching for Dark Artifices was take a trip out to LA with a bunch of friends of mine who were writers. Los Angeles has changed a great deal since I was there in the late 80s, early 90s, but a lot of things have stayed the same and I was interested in sort of the classic institutions that remain there so I went to places like Cantor's Deli which was is a famous deli in Los Angeles that hasn't changed since it was set up in 1950. I used to go there with my grandfather, it looks exactly the same now. Um, and there's a, a scene in Lady Midnight that's set there. Another scene is set uh, up at Neptune's Net, which is called Poseidon's Trident in Lady Midnight, but it's the same kind of slightly scary biker bar on the Pacific Coast Highway looking over the sea where you can get really great fried clams and also be scared by being surrounded by Harley Davidson bikers. But maybe not if you're a shadow hunter. And they're also downtown uh, landmarks like the Bradbury Building, which was very famously used in uh, Blade Runner, and is this beautiful old building with all of this amazing sort of intricate staircases inside. It was also really fun to come up with new kinds of demons and creatures that might populate the West Coast. So there are a lot of sea demons, creatures that crawl out of the ocean. A lot of, I had a lot of fun with that, with the idea of like swimming in the ocean and being surrounded by demons and monsters. Um, and also the kind of creatures that haunt the desert and the sort of arid land that's around Los Angeles. So I got to explore some of that too, and that was really fun. The main characters of the, the Dark Artifices are the Blackthorn family, and that was also a new challenge for me because I had decided I wanted to tell a story about a really large family. Uh, all my previous heroes and heroines had pretty much been orphans. Uh, they had one sibling who was evil. In this case, I wanted to do a big family that loved each other and had very complex relationships. And there are a lot to keep track of, both for Julian and also for me, but it's been a wonderful adventure, kind of recounting their lives, and I've definitely loved writing about such a close-knit family that cares about each other so much. Um, and in the end, I would say, of Queen of Air and Darkness, there really is a moment where the love that they have for each other as a family is the defining factor in turning the tide of an important event. This is also a series in which the government of the Shadowhunter world, which we have all known who have read the Sh Shadowhunter Chronicles, has been fairly unchanging for a thousand years. And when I first started the book, my editor said to me that she felt like the villain was too distant from the main characters and I kind of looked at it and thought, yeah, the person I'm thinking of is the, is, as the villain isn't the villain. The villain is actually this faction of the government of the book. The question, I think, at the heart of Dark Artifices is what do you do when the people that you have been taught to go to when something bad happens are the people who are making the bad thing happen? And how do you resist in a way that is productive and not destructive. And that, I think, is the big sort of moral question at the heart of the books that is solved. Well, I'm not sure it's a question we can ever really solve, but that is addressed and that the characters experience in Queen of Air and Darkness. So I would say Queen of Air and Darkness is a great experience in terms of wrapping up the story. It takes us to a place we've never been before, we've never visited this uh, particular magical land in any of the Shadowhunter books before. Um, uh, it's called Thul, and I hope you guys will love it as much as I do. We also are taken to a place where decisions about how the Shadowhunters live and where they live and how they govern themselves are changed forever so that when we see them again, hopefully in the next series, their whole 
worlds will really have been turned upside down and everything will be different. So that's why the tagline for this book is Queen of Air and Darkness, everything changes.